So, I know I have a show where I make fun of bad movies, but it's more in line with something like Mystery Science Theater 3000, where the flaws with these films are really obvious, and mostly I just make jokes and nitpicky observations. Granted, there's usually some analysis in there, especially if it's something dense like Twilight, and I always give my thoughts at the end of those videos, but they're such low-hanging fruit. No one expects any intellectual, off-the-wall hot takes about these films. But you know, not all bad movies are created equally. Some bad movies are four hours long. They have problems deeply rooted in the characters and stories they try to tell. Some bad movies require me to talk more, joke less. And some bad movies are considered one of the greatest films ever made. Gone with the Wind is a 1939 movie from director Victor Fleming, who you might remember as the only credited director of the six people who worked on Wizard of Oz. It tells the story of Southern heiress Scarlett O'Hara and the many troubles that befall her throughout the American Civil War, as well as her relationship with the antagonistic love interest Rhett Butler. It won Best Picture at the 1940 Academy Awards along with seven other wins, including Best Screenplay and Best Director. And it is not good. <laughs> That's my subjective opinion, sure, but I think I can back it up. Let's talk about why Gone with the Wind is bad, actually. First you take a low common advantage of me, then you insult me! Scarlett O'Hara serves as the main character of Gone with the Wind, and she is a terrible person. First off, she's a slave owner. Bad optics. Now, maybe that would fly in 1940 when racists were still upset about the Civil War. Oh, they're still not over that? God damn. But it immediately rubs me the wrong way about this character. And generously disregarding that, she's a spoiled rich brat right from the beginning. But of course, flawed characters make for interesting stories, and yes, halfway through this film, the Civil War happens and Scarlet loses her slaves and a lot of money. But this doesn't make her better. In fact, it almost makes her worse. She spends so much of this movie whinging about how tragic it is that she has to work and that she can't just own slaves. Poor baby. She never improves or grows as a character. She never learns to work for herself. She never stops being a spoiled rich kid. And amazingly, that's just the beginning of her myriad of unlikable traits. At the beginning of the movie, Scarlet confesses her love to a man named Ashley Williams. Truly. I, I mean Wilkes, Ashley Wilkes, but he's already engaged to a woman named Melanie, and Scarlet never gets over it. The entire Civil War happens, and she's still not over it. And it's not like Melanie is a bad wife or anything, it's not a forced relationship, they seem genuinely happy together. Now, Melanie is Ashley's cousin, but, you know, Confederates. Scarlet is so fucking desperate for this man's attention, she agrees to help Melanie while Ashley's away at war. She even nurses Melanie back to health when she gets sick, all because she wants to fuck this dude. You heard me right, Scarlet O'Hara is a simp. Bad things happen to Scarlet. It's pretty much the one positive of the movie. I enjoy seeing her suffer, but these bad things are never a comeuppance. She never gets punished for the bad things she's done. Well, arguably losing everything in the Civil War is punishment for owning slaves, but that's what we'd call historically unavoidable. These aren't punishments for being awful, they're hardships she must overcome. But I don't want to see this character overcome. I want to see this character stop being a whiny baby, or, barring that, just suffer at her own hands, live with the consequences of being so terrible. She is a wholly irredeemable character, and I have no sympathy for her. And you were going to hate him for the rest of your life. <laughs> Scarlet and Rhett are the main characters, and they are the only characters who get any sort of development in this four-hour movie. 
I don't like Scarlet, so that leaves me with Rhett, the one character I actually do kind of like. He's mean to Scarlet, which makes him really fun to watch, and Clark Gable is absolutely excellent in this role. But even he ends up being a bit of a bastard by the end of the movie. He's deliberately abusive to Scarlet in a way that isn't funny or endearing. Like, fuck Scarlet, but there's a line you don't cross, and it's called domestic abuse. Like, I get it, he wants out of a bad relationship. I think it is the singular, thoughtful arc in this movie. Too bad it comes three hours in. Outside of these two, none of the characters get developed. They all feel like flat stereotypes. And I don't just mean the literal stereotypes. Take Ashley, Scarlet's unrequited love, for example. Outside of her just simping for him, he has no personality. We barely meet him before he's shipped off to war for most of the movie. He seems completely interchangeable with any of the other admirers Scarlet has. He seems pretty pertinent to Scarlet's story. Can we learn a little more about him and their history together? Is he charming? Is he fun? Is he a whiny rich kid like Scarlet? Who knows? He just is. When all I can say about most of the characters in this film is they definitely owned slaves, I feel pretty justified in not liking any of them. And this ties pretty heavily into my next point. I get so bored I could scream. Now, when I say the pacing of a four hour movie is bad, you go, well, yeah, it's probably really slow. But no, I don't mean the pacing is slow. I mean the pacing is bad. Like, sure, there are scenes that could probably be shortened or cut, and it would probably make for a better film. But there's also a lot of stuff that could use expanding. Scarlet meets and agrees to marry a man in the same scene, and one scene later, he's dead. I'm not broken up at all about the death of a character we met less than ten minutes ago. Especially not one who died fighting for the Confederacy. And that's how the whole movie is! Characters aren't interesting, or well-rounded, or memorable. They serve their singular purpose and are never seen again. This is a complete mismanagement of time. You probably could make a four-hour movie out of what you've got here, but you'd need a lot more focus on the parts that just get glazed over, and a lot less on the parts that drag on and on and on. There's a movie that it's very easy to compare Gone with the Wind to, Birth of a Nation. Now, I've probably harped on the racist shit enough, but obviously these films have that in common. But more to the point, I think they have a similar pacing issue. Birth of a Nation was the first full-length feature film ever made, depending on how you define full-length, and you can tell. Birth of a Nation isn't paced the way movies usually are. The characters have no real development as the film meanders scene to scene. Now, Birth of a Nation has an excuse. It was the first movie ever, and it's also kinda propaganda, so choosing not to focus too much on one character or their story tends to be a common tactic. But what's Gone with the Wind's excuse? This was 24 years later. The film industry had made significant advances in visual storytelling. And you're gonna make another plotting, poorly paced mess? It makes me wonder if perhaps the creators of Gone with the Wind might be nostalgic for a bygone era of film? I hope not, because Birth of a Nation is kinda bad. But, you know, so is Gone with the Wind. I can't let him go, I can't. So I say all this, but ultimately I recognize the value of Gone with the Wind. It occupies an important place in film history and inspired many other, frankly much better, movies. And for good reason, it's visually stunning. The cinematography is beautiful, the set and costume design is great, it's a good looking film. Throw in a brilliant performance from Clark Gable and you've got the recipe for a well-received movie in the 30s. So I was willing to just give this movie a 5 out of 10 or something on IMDb and just not mention it. Like it's not good, but it's a classic, so you just... Let it slide. No one needs to know that I secretly dislike Gone with the Wind. And then, 
Something unbelievable happened. So, late in the movie, Red and Scarlet are married and they have a little girl. She's riding around their lawn on a pony and she takes a tumble. And like, she fell softly onto some nice grass. I've taken harder spills than this onto concrete. I just had like, perpetual scabs on my knees as a kid. Cause I fell off my bike basically every week. But the movie plays this dramatically, so I'm thinking, alright, she's gonna have a broken arm or leg or just one of those comedic bandages around her head and poor dear Scarlet is gonna have to raise an injured child. But then, instead of that, the scene fades to her fucking funeral. And I burst out laughing. Now... Full disclosure, I laugh at a lot of things in movies that I probably should not. Like, in high school, a substitute teacher showed us Twister, and I was the only person who laughed at Carrie Elways' death. But you know, it's not like anyone's arguing Twister is one of the greatest movies of all time. This is so shocking, and so just out of nowhere. And really, the funny part is her just softly falling onto the ground. This in no way looks like a death, so I was absolutely aghast at her funeral. And I get that it's a kid dying, there's a limit to how realistic you can make it look, but why kill the kid at all? She's basically in this scene and nothing else. Just like most of the characters, she could be cut from the movie consequence-free. And if you really wanted to kill the kid, just keep it off screen. Play a crash sound effect as Scarlet looks on in horror, and this problem wouldn't even exist. This was the moment any hesitation I had about not shitting on this movie went right out of the window. This is the greatest movie ever, and not only is it incapable of making a child's death seem tragic, it makes it seem actively laughable. This is a bad movie. After all, tomorrow is another day. So, what the fuck do I even say now? Again, I acknowledge the film's positive aspects. I understand how in 1939 people got swept up in this movie. It looks really good, audiences wouldn't care about the racist shit, and cinema was young enough that some of the flaws wouldn't seem as bad back then. But it is the year of our Lord 2020. This movie is 81 years old. Can we please stop acting like this film is anything more than a product of its time? Movies like Citizen Kane and Casablanca have stood the test of time. They're still as beautiful, impactful, and enjoyable as they were in the 30s. Gone with the Wind absolutely is not. I respect its place in film history, but as for the film itself, well, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.